You are listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in this episode, we answer fitness and health questions. At the end of the episode, in the beginning of the episode, we have a lot of fun. We talk about current events and studies and make fun of each other. It's a good time. Today's oh, yeah. intro was 37 minutes long. After that, we answered some specific fitness and health questions that were asked by our audience. I'm going to give you a rundown of the entire episode, though. So we open up by talking about Adam's baby soft skin. It's Ooh. uh, it's gorgeous. Shiny and Luxur- beautiful. By the way, the reason why his skin looks so good and why he looks like a baby with a beard is because he uses Caldera Lab products. This is a company we work with, uh, skin products you can put on your skin that will rejuvenate uh, your skin, make you look more youthful and amazing. He's super handsome. You should check him out on YouTube. Um, by the way, there's a huge discount uh, because you listen to Mind Pump. Go to calderalab.com. That's C A L D E R. ALAB.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump, get 20% off. Then we talk about aliens. Apparently, oh, yeah. uh, a top official from Israel said that aliens are among us, but they made a, uh, I guess they made a pact with the US government not to tell anybody. <laughs> yes, this sounds super legit. This is yeah, weird. Yeah, it's happening. Then we talk about a survey that just came out of the UK, alarming survey. Uh, almost half of men between the ages of 18 to 30 uh, or 30 to 60 or uh, 30 to 60 sorry yeah uh, suffering from erectile dysfunction we need like a sound effect there oh man that's meow, 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 that's, meow. Uh, that's real bad so we, we kind of speculate as to why that might be happening then we talk about um unsolved mysteries on netflix and the japanese tsunami episode that was really crazy, crazy. then i talk about the hungarian politician the anti-gay hungarian politician he's hungry for something who got caught in the 25 man orgy this is a true story <laughs> really crazy. Then we talk about these corporate offices you can order on Amazon and build in your backyard. This is really cool. And then I talk about the pre-workout supplement that I took that almost fried my brain and reminds me why I like Legion so much. Legion makes the best Legion wins. performance enhancing supplements you'll find anywhere. They're third party tested. The labels are transparent. They only have ingredients that have studies that support them. And again, because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually get a discount. Go check them out. Go to buylegion.com, B-Y-L-E-G-I-O-N.com forward slash Mind Pump, and then use the code Mind Pump to get hooked up. Then we got into the questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know if we integrate different proteins um, into our diets like whey, casein, plant, etc. The next question, this person wants to know what the best way is to fix muscle imbalances. This is when one muscle is more developed than the other or when you're not moving optimally because you have a weakness in a particular area. The next question, this person wants us to talk about salt. Uh, is sodium the bad guy that we've been told that it is? Mm. And the final question, this person asked us a personal one. Have any of us ever fallen out of love with fitness, not with each other. We always wow. loved each other. Sad. Also, um, it's December. This is the time when everybody eats a lot of food and has a tough time uh, with their health and fitness. Um, so here's what we did. We put together a massive December special, and we've taken all of the guesswork out of your workouts for you. There are three tiers. We have a new to weight training bundle. We have a body transformation bundle. And then those of you that are more advanced and like the real hard stuff, We have the New Year Extreme Intensity Bundle. Each one of them includes nine months of workout. So you get nine months of exercise programming, each one with different programs, massively discounted, huge discounts to these bundles. So here's what you need to do. Go to mapsdecember.com, check out each bundle, find the one that works best for you, sign up, follow the programs, and see what happens. Again, you can find all of these bundles at mapsdecember.com. I don't know, Adam. If it wasn't for your beard, I'd be like, why is there a baby sitting over there? Your skin just keeps getting younger. Oh, <laughs> that's, just, uh, you know, you're you, you bringing up the caldera because I look shiny and I look good right now. Uh, my skin. <laughs> yeah. You, youthful. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's like, it's, uh, you know, so it's I, supple and, uh, and, uh, I am, buoyant. I'm actually, okay. So let me tell you how like I, cute I, elf. It's uh I was nervous when we took Caldera on because I I seemed I Doug, I'll get back in my seat. I know you're trying to adjust me. Sorry. I was well hold on. Let me first do this and then I'll get back to our Caldera commercial. So I got something for you guys. Oh, what'd you get us? So yeah, commercial paused. 
Here, oh. this is for you. Wow! Yay! This is for you. Why are we all wearing these? And you guys, and you have a- to. Adam's wear- really in the spirit. I am. I know, you didn't notice that? I know like, he's always he, like he, that. He goes all in. Why so, am I wearing this? Because uh, this is uh, in lieu of uh, our twelve days of Christmas. That huh? is, yeah. I believe, starting tomorrow. Hold on a second. Let me get it. On. Um, so, I want you guys to wear hats uh, every podcast. No, I can't hear anything. Until <laughs> until Christmas, because every day we're giving cool shit away. So every day on our Instagram, there'll be giveaways. We're doing 12 days of Christmas. Sick. Leading up, I believe it starts tomorrow. Uh, and so make sure you're paying attention to the Mind Pump Media IG, giving away cool stuff with all of our partners. Awesome. You so. Wear these hats? Yeah. Every day? Because yeah, you're you're giving away stuff. All right. So is Caldera one of our uh, fir- first ones? Oh, or- so they're not one of the first ones, but back to that commercial that I was starting to do there and, and did a terrible transition over to Santa hats. I know. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's talk about your skin. No, so I, we're, <laughs> no, I, we, I was really nervous that we were not going to be able to perform for them because you guys don't use it as much as I do, if, if ever. And I loved it. So we had a, a small break. Well, I'm just oily. Yeah, Naturally, maybe that's what it yeah, is. Justin, Justin, I'm Gatorade. Justin, Justin needs it. Yeah, yeah, Justin does. It. <laughs> Justin actually needs it the most. Yeah. I get it from Adam by osmosis. Re- refuses to do anything <laughs> like that. He's like, I yeah. am not dropping anything beauty related. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, I'll pass. Just <laughs> refusing to do it. Yeah. He's yeah. too attractive. That's why I want him to do it though, just for a few weeks, just to see if he gets compliments. Oh, that would be kind of an interesting, you know, like trans transformation thing. You know, just see. You know, it would be like when they have like a when they have a picture of like the desert floor, and it's like cracked you know yeah. and then like rain falls on it's like oh uh, yeah like plants come out All of a sudden plants. yeah that's, that's what'll happen i might get more hairy but they yeah, they yeah. reached it's out scary. and uh they want to sign for all of 2021 obviously which means they're getting their roi and uh you know at the same time that i was getting a message from them i must have got two or three dms and you know people rarely ever does people you know dm you to tell you how great something is or whatever so i mm-hmm. imagine there's a lot more people that are enjoying the product but Everybody that's purchased it uh, seems to love it, and so our audience has been enjoying it. It too. works well. I think uh, the other part of it too is we now record the podcast on video too, right? So you go to YouTube and you can see our faces, and um, it's obvious I'm more handsome. It's just it progressively <laughs> you you are now mo- you're just continue to get even more youthful. That's yeah. how it is. Yeah, just more and more. Handsome. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I got, I've i always I complain about the dry skin thing all the time, right? With my yeah, psoriasis do. and stuff like that. And so I already am big like lotion guy all over myself. Mm-hmm. But uh, this stuff has been incredible. So I'm a big fan. I was a big fan even when we weren't sponsored. So we, yeah. there was a, a long time there that we weren't. And I was, I remember hitting Rachel up all the time like, you got to get Caldera back because yeah. I use it every day. <laughs> By the way, yeah. are these new are these new hats or am I sharing with someone no, else? No, it's brand okay, new good. hats. I, wanna, with I had Jerry I, order you guys all okay, brand new yeah. hats. I don't want to get lice again. Yeah. No, no, no. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Every Has year? that ever happened? Yeah. Have I ever had lice? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Really? When I was a kid. Ew. Did you never had lice? No. Really? No. No, but you as had flesh. dirty as you are? You had flesh-eating dirty, bacteria. They were scared. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the, the move. The I'm telling left. you guys. Who's the, who's the kid on Charlie Brown that has like the dust cloud that falls around? <laughs> is that Linus? Pigpen. Oh, Pigpen. Yeah. That's who it is? Yeah. Linus carries his blanket. That's right. Yeah. When I was a kid, I did. I got lice. And all my brothers and sisters uh, got lice. Oh, man. And my mom- Did you shave your head or did you just comb it No, out? dude. We're not. It's not, it's, it's not, the, it's not head. the industrial revolution. Yeah. You know? <laughs> throw some loud- like, what, What's that powder they throw on you? Yeah, no. Uh, DDT. Yeah. No, my mom had to do the whole thing where she combs the hair and pulls everything out. And cleans it with the chemicals and mm. you know you sit in there or whatever and I didn't because I was so young I didn't realize what a pain in the ass it was and then my daughter got it a while ago yeah. and uh, geez, she's gonna listen to this one day she's gonna be so mad anyway she got yeah. it she was a kid she got it. You have to like the your bed, whole everything. everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah. You throw you throw stuffed animals like in burn it. plastic bags. Leave them in there for a while. You got to clean the shit out of everything. Everybody gets checked. And you know me, I'm like. I don't like, I get the heebie-jeebies, whatever, that yeah. feeling. Yeah. Like right now I'm getting it because I'm talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> what a nightmare. <laughs> Just little crawlers. A, what all over a you. nightmare. Speaking of heebie-jeebies, so uh, my buddy sent me over an article that uh, apparently, I think Israel said it, the chief uh, guy, executive dude over there with their space <laughs> program. so bad. Oh, uh, you know, I'm terrible. I don't, come on, dude. Chief, this hey, is the New York Post, which is basically like the Donald National Trump, Enquirer of, hey, of right now. Donald Trump knows that there's aliens out there. This is what it said. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and they made a pact with uh, the U.S. government yes. to not say anything until we're ready. 
Yeah, because because they they want everybody to start getting along again. Yeah, now, are you luck. are you guys ready for this? What the aliens? The, the alien invasion. What's your thoughts on this? Uh, before Justin, you before just so you know, we Doug and I. I don't. Was, Sal was in here. Was Sal speculating with us, or just mean you? I, I love that here. you are bringing this up. I know that's uh, this, today. I'm this giving is, you a softball pitch yeah. right now. What do you think, Doug? Was it just mean you? Um, maybe. Or, yeah, I don't I remember call. Sal saying anything. No, you in here. We were talking to. Here's the here's the thing. I just want to. Okay, let's pretend. Let's pretend this is a real thing. Yeah, there's yeah. aliens. Uh, I like How do you feel about this? Um, mm. I want I want to know more. I want to know uh, what experiments they've been doing. I want to know why they haven't solved our problems for us because they're so smart. Like what the fuck? Yeah. I love that you come with all these demands. Hell right? yeah! This yeah, this demands. species that and, is obviously oh, I just want to learn. as intelligent or more intelligent than us that could get to our planet. We couldn't get to theirs. Yeah. Right? And how you, are, are you, you have, from Sirius? Sal like, has demands. From. Yeah, I'm I want to like, know this. I want to yeah. know that. <laughs> yeah, you'll be the first to get eaten. Are yeah. you responsible for everything that Ancient Aliens TV show was talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to like, know like that. The pyramids, like, come on. No, really though. What's your guys? All right, would you guys be uh, scared, excited, nervous? Like, what's the feeling that you I, would get if, if if this really came out? That I wouldn't believe it. Yeah, first of all, no, 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 it's real. But, let's, yeah. let, let's, well, let's, 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 let's take, real. yeah, let's get yeah. rid of the, uh, the possibility that it's not real and let's just say it's real. Mm -hmm. There's aliens that have been here. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. I Justin, would, you, not oh, you. Oh, you first. Yeah, yeah, Justin yeah, yeah. first. Uh, I don't want to hear your, sorry. Adam, Adam's I don't want to hear your bossy <laughs> attitude with your, Adam's doing the first interview. they need to say this and then, <laughs> yeah, meet with this world leader. Um, I honestly, like I, I would trip out on it for a long time. Like it would, it would take me a long time to process it. I, I would go back and like, uh, revisit a lot of all the different like theories out there and like how we've, we've come along as society with technology and like all this kind of stuff. And then, yeah, like at what point did they come? Like I would, I would want to know like, so we could start going back in history and like redo history. Yeah. I like that. I like that. What yeah. if they now? What if the aliens came and then they were just like, uh, "Hey, you know, like a whole swath of people." Yeah, that thing you believe in, that religion, totally wrong. Here's what's going on. Oh, go, you know, uh, government over here, you guys are wrong. These guys are. Wrong. How mad would people be? Yeah. Think about that. If they came out and they're like, you know, global yeah. warming, eh, or if they said yes, or what if Jesus also went to Mars? What? Well, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> what if they <laughs> Whoa, dude! <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what, what, hey, how long do you think it would take before people tried to have sex with them? Wow! Oh. Of course, that's where you go. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. To, yeah. In today's age, not very long. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm sure. I mean, people, the little gray guys. I'm pretty sure we'd want a law passed. Oh, to do say you know it's okay. what? Do you know what sailors used to have sex with uh, in, in when they would go in the ocean forever? What? Do you know about this? Purposes? There's like a, like a, I think it's like a type of, I don't know the name, it's like a sea manatee of some type. <laughs> what? what? No way, the sea cow? Something like that, because wow. the, this is true. The, oh, look this up, Doug. Oh, I, I want to see if this I'm, is BS. I mean, it's going to be another time when I show you. I mean. Because the genitals of this particular sea disgusting. manatee looks like the female genitalia. So they would literally capture this. Oh thing, my god! That's and then so they disgusting. they'd sleep with it. What? <laughs> what? Okay, explain to me what you're reading when this comes up in yeah. your feed. Huh? What are you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Beasts. What exactly? <laughs> what Men ex with yeah, beasts. <laughs> yeah. What exactly are you googling? <laughs> Am I normal? Yeah. <laughs> to get Bro. an article like that? Because you've heard of like goats and you know like these lonely shepherds and whatnot. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, like we've heard stories, right? Uh, but. Sea manatees? They, well, this is. Oh no, no. I know. Why I read this because they think that this may be where the uh, mermaid myth came from. Oh, you've been banging all them <laughs> manatees and yeah. creating mermaids. I uh, mean, dude, Doug, Doug looks either confused right now, or he's not finding, or anything. I'm not uh, finding anything to finish. Strangely about. excited. It, 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 okay. the, the firewall blocks it. No, it's it's yeah. there. I don't want to stop and look. I'll, I'll find it later. But yeah. I'm serious. It'll be in the show notes, they, right, Jackie? They, because. <laughs> 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 yeah. We'll send you a link yeah, there you go. for all the animals. Used to. Anyway, that's crazy to me. Wow. Speaking of sex, by the way, did you guys hear about this huge survey that they did? I think it was in the UK. Did you hear about this? No. Mm -mm. This is kind of sad. I'm going to find it right now because it's kind of sad. Um, so they did a huge survey in the UK, and uh, apparently almost half of men in their 30s suffer from erectile dysfunction. Half? Yes. In their 30s? Yeah, that's what it says. Half of men in their 30s, this is in the UK. Wow. Yeah, struggle to get an erection. Studies have shown. Surprise polling reveals that this age group is most likely, most likely to struggle 
with keeping it up. So what? Uh, how do you? Um, Almost a third have broken up with their partner as a result. This is crazy. What's happening over there? Wow, wow! Nearly half of men aged eighteen to sixty across the UK are suffering impotence, with four in ten main men blaming stress, followed by tiredness, anxiety, and boozing too heavily. All right. So what do you guys think the problem is? Why do you guys think these young men are having issues with? Uh, yeah, you know, what are their testosterone levels? Like, yeah. what's happening over there? You know, I I I, th- I have a theory. Yeah, I do have a theory. I do think that it's the overuse of pornography. Hmm. I do. This issue didn't exist before. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Young men never had yeah. issues like this. I think they're just desensitized like crazy because all the stuff that they yeah. Share. I don't I don't disagree with that. I mean, we've talked before about. I mean, how, again, before I mean, it's they definitely had definitely contributing factor. Yeah, like, do you think that sailors would have had sex with the sea manatee things if they had? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like they had that uh, porn hub. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, guy? They, they, they got you know you have animal. this. You know you have this on your phone, I right? Gotta do something with this, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I get. Too I gotta many take of these. care of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, kind of crazy though. That forty or almost fifty percent. How do they measure that though? <laughs> with the ruler? No, they ask. No, like yeah. It's, ask, it's a survey. Like yeah. it, so, these are just people saying, like, "Oh yeah, I have problems with that." Yeah, you know, it could be too being distracted. Just imagine. I mean, we now have this <laughs> distracted. No, oh, like my, declining I, health factors I mean, too. I'm, I'm playing video games that, right? right now. Yeah. Yeah. you laugh, but yeah, I mean, I but yeah, I, I mean, I mean, that, that's an example of like a, a younger boy. But even as a man, okay, having a cell phone now that is like another limb of yours. Mm-hmm. How I, and, and don't yeah, tell me this. Levels, I'm tell sure. me this has not happened to you guys before. I mean, there's this has definitely happened to me, or at least I'll admit it. That uh, there's been nights where I know that Katrina was probably in the mood. We're having dinner. I'm reading an email. I'm all pissed off about mm. because I'm working, you know, yeah. and I'm just not in the mood. Mm. I'm not in the mood because I'm I'm irritated about something like that, and that doesn't make me want to do that right away. And so I don't know if that's the same thing. I think what they're talking about. Well, is, that's why I asked. How do they measure this? Because I think, that would you if that was hap- or, uh, a, a consistent reoccurring thing in your household. That's would you say that you have erectile? dysfunction? No, I think erectile dysfunction is you're trying to get up. Yes, you want to. You're like you, I want. That's to. why I want to know how they measure this. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Like I want to, but it's not. It's not working. Not. But again, I don't want to. How many times have you guys noticed this too, though? When when that happens, okay. When when a scenario, it's normally because you're somewhere else, right? Your your mind is somewhere else because yeah. you're not in the present. Well, they moment. said stress was a major factor that they were all consistently saying that, right? Yeah, but right. It, but I tell you, um, if you look at the numbers, uh, erectile dysfunction is exploded among young men. This was a category of uh, of the population that never. Or, now it could deflate it. I'm going to say yeah. Pornhub and distractibility, the two of them together. I would say it's yeah. I'd say it's pornography and probably poor health. I yeah, think a lot of these health. guys, yeah, they're just not. Um, they're not exercising, not lifting weights. They're probably. I mean, obesity is so high now. Yeah, you know that even in the UK, Europe is suffering now from obesity, like almost like the US is. So probably what it is. Yeah, I'd imagine there's just a lot of lack of activity, you know, in general. It just seems like there's been a massive decline worldwide of activity. Yeah. When was yeah. this done? Was this done recent too? Recent. This just came out. Oh, uh, I mean, I wonder if you take into account COVID too, right? Mm. Everybody being at home right now? Well, stress is at all time highs. Yeah. When do you think all that stat's going to come out, right? Like nobody, like you see little stuff coming out, right? With depression, suicide, I just alcohol. read a study that mental health among um, adults in the U.S. has reached a 20-year low based off of- My uh, buddy service. just, you know what my buddy what just sent me a text? Pre- what's the pregnancy rate right now? You I know, don't know. Everybody being home, I wonder if it either, because normally that would like move numbers way well, yeah, up, right? Yeah, but erectile dysfunction cancels But then that, that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so exactly. So it evens it out. It out yeah. I don't know, but um, what I would predict is typically what you see is a boom in pregnancies after a terrible event is oh, over. Oh, yeah, that's true. So like World War II, yeah. and then it's over. The and baby boomers. Everybody's having, yeah. So yeah. I would imagine that w- once we feel like we're out of the, you know, uh, out of the, the thick of it. Exactly. Then you're going to see a lot more, you know, babies being born. I wanted so. to share with you guys what my buddy sent. I'm trying to find where he, he sent it in a thread talking about that somebody or I forget what country just said that they had more suicides than COVID deaths. Oh, Japan. Oh, yes. Thank mm-hmm. you. You did see that. I did. Should have known you seen that. Yep. That's crazy. I know. Oh. Total, right? They're not counting any of that stuff. They're not even considering any of that stuff. Now, here's the thing that I, I want to be clear, too, is that, okay, let's say that they don't do government lockdowns. Does that mean that nobody's going to suffer? No, we're still going to have, still going to suffer. Um, still going to be a lot of problems. I think it'll be less, uh, potential less problems. And or at the very least, people aren't going to 
you know, blame or wait for government to tell them everything yeah. they do. They tend to act. Was it Sweden that's that they basically did that from the very beginning? There's no lockdowns. They're doing lockdowns now. They're doing lockdowns. Yeah, now. they're starting to kind of reverse now a little bit. Um, really? Yeah, yeah, they are. So well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> there goes that uh, uh, yeah. can't, can't, example. Can't pull from them no more. Uh, okay. Uh, no, you brought up Japan. Did you guys see um, Unsolved Mysteries where they? No. Oh, the, the wait. tsunami. Yeah, the tsunami. Oh, yeah. the spirits and shit. Yeah, where they're all seeing ghosts. Yeah. Dude, that is weird. That was tripping me out. That is super weird. Like, like the the cab drivers would be out, you know, and like picking people up, and they'd get in, and, and they're told. The thing is that they could measure this because you know they actually had a running toll mm. and and they thought for sure like somebody was in the back seat and they get out and there's nobody nobody even there mm. that's weird yeah dude trippy yeah, that is very straight it's um did the video of the tsunami that they're showing on that and yeah. then the the stories that they were telling yeah oh oh it's like heartbreaking oh i couldn't even I there was, know, was one man time i was a kid i couldn't oh even do my it. god yeah that whole yeah the whole thing is just it, it really brings perspective to something like that like you're just you see it on the news and you're like whoa that's crazy Could whatever you, but do you get out of dodge or do you hang out hang back at your house and try and protect your house uh, oh. If my family stuck oh, we there, dodge. No. well, okay, you say that quick, right? Like, because we saw the aftermath, right? But yeah. if you're somebody who lives in an area where there's storms and shit like that happening all the time, mm -hmm. until it actually fully hits, you mm. you probably don't realize it's going to be to that extreme, right? Mm. Yeah, and it, I would think there was what was I just I was watching some documentary of like somebody who stayed through one of those and filmed the whole thing because they've been through so many storms, they just. They, yeah, like they got like uh, numb to it or whatever. It right, just happened. It was right. like a regular thing. So do you bail or do you stay and board up your house and try and save the house? Like what's the, what's the thoughts on I that? I don't know. For me, like I I just don't value things uh you know that much in terms of like uh the lives and the lives around me. Like who cares? Like I'll start know, you, over again. I guess you kinda had a similar thing with yeah, the fire. The fires, exactly. What did you bring? Did you bring anything? Your, uh, your you, dirty magazines and what else did you I grab? didn't really bring much. <laughs> dirty <laughs> magazines. Yeah, Courtney was like trying to just like we gotta get, to get these. We gotta get these. <laughs> yeah, I was like whatever, like uh, pictures and photos of kids and wedding album stuff and that all. you can't replace. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and like I left uh, the majority of my shit there. I'd be gone. Yeah, I'd be gone because I'm like you wouldn't grab anything. I'm not attached to it. Um, you I don't would, really have anything. So uh, what would you bring? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, li I live. In my, I live in my car. Yeah, I just drive. I just drive my house. Yeah. I would just. By the way, the animal yeah, got to get the <laughs> New Balance shoes. By the yeah. way, the animal people, the the sailors would bang was called a dugong. Dugong. That sounds like wow. someone got you. Bro. No, D U G O N G. Look it up, Doug, and then well, we can. And then look up I'll sailors. Be, I'll bang. be watching the uh, videos. No, later. this is what they used to. Yeah. This is what you they still used didn't answer first. my question. How you came. To about Come on, bro. I don't know how I know half the shit that I know. You know that. Yeah, well, That's, it just doesn't work. Well, the other stuff makes sense because it's yeah. around our field, right? You're searching things. Like, I know how you get- <laughs> I looked up animals like you could have sex with. <laughs> yeah, that, that's sex. Be best yeah. animals to bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, Lonely at sea. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, what are my options? Yeah, 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 what dude. happens if I get yeah, trapped in the yeah, ocean? Yeah, yeah, what if I'm scared? What if I want to have sex? What do I do? Yeah. What do I do? I got to Shark? No, not shark. No, that's a lot of teeth. A lot of teeth. Too fast. Dolphins too fast. Yeah. I need yeah. some slow, <laughs> slow and fleshy. I can catch it, <laughs> jiggly, slow, slow and fleshy. That's what I need. Oh, Which God. one's gonna feel like? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, ba back to the tsunami. Uh, I'm just taking people uh, on an emotional roller coaster right now. Yeah. Sorry. Back to the tsunami thing. Uh, that's the wor That's my biggest. Like, if I had to pick the worst, biggest fear, like way to die, like the worst way to die, mm. drowning. Can you think of a worse way? It to die? is pretty horrible. Yeah. Would you rather burn or die? I mean, excuse me, burn I, to death or drown. I thought somebody told me, Doug. Maybe you just, oh, I thought that's rather. supposed to be euphoric. I, I thought, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, drown, like the, the the feeling you get when you like you take in all the water. I think it's supposed to be euphoric. Like you get so this chemical up. release. I've heard freezing to death is the way to go. <laughs> what? Wow. After the initial cold. Doug's been researching. It, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I just been thinking look, about this. A lot. Look up uh, drowning euphoria. I okay. think I think that, that I think that actually. Well, uh, it sounds terrifying. Really? I, I feel I agree with you that like drowning sounds terrifying oh. to me. But I think when it actually happens, it's not. Yeah, as, like would you rather be drowned or or burned burn to death? Burned to death is oh, uh, it's awful, burned to death dude. would be worse. Bro. Well, oh, I've heard dude. with the burning to death, at first it hurts, but then your nerves are gone, and then you're just. That's it. Yeah, but how long until you get to that point? I don't know. And like excruciating. If you're burned just like a little patch of your finger. Yeah. You know? ah. 
Yeah. Like, oh, your whole body, dude? Yeah, I don't yeah. scream like no that, thanks. though. I that's do. A, that's a weird scream. <laughs> it's fine. You, that's you, not, do, you do you. That's not how I do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, have you guys ever Burned been- to death would be worse to me. Totally. Yeah. Uh, I can't- I mean, I, I, have, I would rather- I don't know. I think they're I, both the, terrible. The, 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 drowning has like, the, like uh, if you're claustrophobic, right? That there's mm-hmm. a little bit of that, right? If That, to me, sounds a little scarier than like fire. You could be out in the open, right? That's not, that's not as scary. <sighs> just but burning just sounds- yeah, I don't know. Well, okay, so have you guys ever been choked out? Like, have you ever been put to sleep by a choke? Uh, yeah. Okay, if you've ever been choked out, you know that right before you go to sleep, you kind of like, oh, it feels good. Ooh, yeah, night-night. That's what I think the drowning is supposed to be like. Yeah, but I don't know if that's the same, so that's a blood choke. So are you checking me right now? Yeah, I'm seeing it. I think you're right. Thank you. It says deathologists, which happens to be, guess be a, that's uh, a thing. profession, yeah. wow. say drowning is perhaps the best way to die. Boom! That a euphoric sensation supposedly blankets one's consciousness right before losing it. Wow. Mm. There you go. Wow. Look at that. There's two facts that we brought. Man. Adam brought the death by drowning. I bought. I brought the sex animal in the sea. It's your turn. Wow. <laughs> what do I got? What uh, do you got for us, dude? Any random? Come on. What do you got for us, Justin? I, I was thought I was going to bring the aliens, and then he totally like, oh, jumped, I jumped stole in front. your alien oh, talk. Speaking of alien stuff, those monoliths keep popping up all over the place. Yeah, so did you see the four? There's a set of four now that looks just like the fifth element. Yeah. And I'm like, come on, dude. It's a movie. I yeah. guarantee you yeah, yeah. it's movie marketing, and it's brilliant. Whoever came up with it, it's brilliant. They're getting Why don't so we much do free. some smart shit like that, then? Like well, what? For maps programs. Put, just put a random Imagine dumbbell. Imagine if it was going to drive everybody to Mind Pump Media. <laughs> just put a random dumbbell somewhere. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, like a, or like a massive one, like it's overly not... sized. So people are like, what is this, a giant's dumbbell? <laughs> it's a giant. <laughs> <laughs> giants exist. <laughs> we, we should make these. A giant. <laughs> yeah, we, should, we should make these like 40 foot fucking dumbbells, dude, that we put out yeah. there that weigh like tons. Let's just leave them wow. around. Yeah, the just places. leave them. Leave them. In the middle, yeah. of, the middle of the night. Yeah. Like in the middle of the desert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a giant. It's a giants. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Oh no. Dude, I that saw a show about sails that. to the roof. Yeah, yeah, like like giants. Uh did, did you watch that at all? By what? chance there was like they were trying to they were trying to prove that giants existed. Like this whole this whole thing. Oh, where they find the, the skeletons and yeah, stuff? Yeah, and they found them some of the mounds here in the North America that they found like gigantic heads and gigantic bones, but then mysteriously they've vanished, you know, and like people have uh, collectors have taken them out of uh well, it's circulation. Not- it's not very unrealistic, right? So what are some I mean there's we have records of like really tall, like twelve foot tall people, don't we? What's the what's the tallest? I don't think what's 12, the record for know, twelve. I just yeah, threw but, it out there. Yeah. Maybe ten. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So, it's cra- it's crazy though. It's not it's 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 definitely way over seven. Well, you know, I eight. know in the doesn't the Bible have stories of giants? Yeah, in the past? they do. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, from what I've read, those old stories are accurate. Ne- Nephilim or <laughs> is it the Nephilim? Uh uh. Yeah, it's something like that. Well, think about it this way. Well, okay. And what, and, okay, now when you're talking about stories, telling something, like that, it could be a like a, a seven foot man looks like a giant to me. You're right, and especially True. back then, when right. think about it this when way, when you never saw that. Yeah, like right, we see the NBA, so we see giants all the time. Imagine if you're somebody who went forty years of your life never seeing a seven foot five. And you're person, malnourished, which by so the way, like that tall is, is yeah. very would be very common, right? If you didn't have television, you, uh, when was the last time you saw a seven foot five person? Never. Walk? Okay, so never. Now imagine seeing that person for the first time. You're forty. Years old, you write about it and be like, I saw a giant. Yeah, right? it would be weird. Yes. Yeah. So apparently, according to like myth and lore, right? I, I, I think like angels banged humans and created giants. Mm. Like, this is part of like the mythology. Well, that makes it. sense. Yeah. That's a, that's what are you looking up right now, Doug? You giving me the tall person? Can yeah. We... So there's been nine feet right there. Yeah, nine feet two inches is the tallest discovered. Okay. Skeleton. Okay. Yeah, Catalina Island. Wow. Ooh, Catalina wine mixer. <laughs> Motherfucker. Motherfucking <laughs> Catalina wine, wine mixer. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good time. Yeah. Wow, so that's legit. Was it a real skeleton or is that like a, is it just hearsay? Uh, yeah, it could be real. I don't know. Let's see here. It says some people have accused him of exaggerating, mm. but uh, I don't know if that's a, f- a fact or not. Interesting. Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, people that want it really bad, you know, and so they've there's been a lot of articles and some some fuckery out there with like archaeologists trying to make you know piece piece bones together to make a, a giant. But I mean, it, it is likely like of course like, we've seen like dinosaurs, right? 
It's yeah. like a bunch of lizards that we put together to make like these giant. We know animals. really nothing about them. We just keep like yeah. drawing new things on them. And oh, now they have feathers. Oh, yeah, yeah. of course. No, so, now they say they don't. Now they don't have feathers. Yes, yeah, so, right. I'm so not, that I'm just not changed. Closed. I'm not closing on that. Yet. You don't yeah. know what dinosaurs? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> aliens put them here. Yeah. <laughs> trick, uh, trick us. Yeah, see so more things I want to ask the aliens. Right. Yeah. Um, that would be weird to see aliens. That would be, I think, do you guys think that would totally shake up society in a big way? I don't know. I yeah, like, I think we're ready for it. Of course, it would shake things up. Mm. I mean, because then now like if, all of a sudden we want our alien friends to I give mean, us all the answers. I mean, if they if they were just listen, if they were just another species that got here, they, so they're they're definitely as smarter smarter than we oh, are. Smarter, if they right? Got here. Right, if they got here, smarter than we are. They don't want to harm us. They don't want to eat us. They don't have any desire to move. They they think our planet sucks compared to theirs, but they're just traveling. Is it really going to be that big of a but deal? According to that article, they wanted to work with us because they. Well, there you go. Yeah, they were. That's, like, they're friendly. Well, yeah. okay, so here, here's they're the, trying to do their experiments and figure things. Now, out. Now, here's a legit problem. Let's say you're head of the CIA or the KGB or whatever, some you know leading government agency, and these aliens came to Earth, obviously with far superior technology, the ability to travel through space at speeds that are beyond light speed, because in order to travel far distances in space, light speed is even slow. And so you're thinking to yourself, tell me this shit before you tell my enemies. Because if I have this technology, we are the superpower of the world. You see what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that would be the-, the I feel the like they, they would be evolved past that. The, they wouldn't allow that to happen. They wouldn't be they'd like- They'd be like, we're not going to tell you. Yeah, exactly. If that's your if that's your thoughts, then yeah, I guess we're going to leave you out. Yeah. Yeah. What if they're like us? What if they're just advanced with their technology, but they're just as stupid with other stuff? You know what I mean? Mm. I feel like if they were, they would have done something, right? Mm, maybe they would, have, they would have dropped the bomb. Well, they've or obviously crashed, right? If they've crashed, so uh, they're not great pilots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> maybe they're not the best idiots. Yeah, <laughs> dumb, <laughs> dumb aliens. Hey, speaking of idiots, did you guys hear about this politician? I gotta look this up, dude. Get the right <laughs> more idiot politicians. Oh no, this is the best that I've uh, that I've ever read. So there's this Hungarian politician. Okay, he's an anti-gay Hungarian politician. So he's like super anti-gay marriage. Wow. Like, he likes policies that are... Where's, in, where's he at? Huh? Hungry? Uh, well. Yeah. If he's Hungarian... <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't just because he's Hungarian doesn't mean he's necessarily he's in Hungary. He could be in the United Hungarian States. Hungarian politician in China. No, he's in, <laughs> he's in Hungary. It's, uh, uh, so, wait, 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 wait. So he's super anti, but we've seen in the past what these people are really doing when they're super anti something. But, You're right. But, but continue. You are right. Anytime, no. Anybody, anytime someone's super anti, like something like that, you always got to think, huh? Hmm, I wonder what their extracurricular activity looks so like. So his name is Joseph Sajir. I think I'm saying it right. So hmm. cops caught him <laughs> yeah. fleeing a 25-man orgy. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> he went hard. <laughs> he went <laughs> He went hell hard, too. He went really hard. Yeah. yeah. It was a 25-man orgy. There he is. Wow. Um, and uh, he was he was fleeing. I guess the cops saw him running uh, out through the window. Wow. So he was uh, he wasn't just you know doing he wasn't just he didn't just do gay stuff. No. Well, he's, what's he's hard? All in. What's yeah. funny is that he probably wouldn't get all this shit if he wasn't so anti-gay. But he, because he's anti-gay, and then he ends up. Well, you, you see, know. How, you saw that with some of those like uh, televangelist like preachers. Like it, it's just with male prostitutes, yeah, or, male pro mm -hmm. and politicians. Same thing. It's just like it's a big cover up of like. What I don't know that was happening with a, a TV evangelicus. Jesus, I just <laughs> fucked that Whoa. one. Up. Yeah, just dude, <laughs> it's that's a, the worst. Pronunciation. Yeah, there was <laughs> one. I don't know if it's an evangel, but it was definitely do it for me. That yeah. evangelicus. 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 Damn, now you fucked <laughs> yeah, me yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, Evangelicals. Okay. Evangel no. Evangelicals? I don't know. <laughs> Evangelists. 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 Thank you, Doug. Yes. That's a, that's wow. A, when you have heavenly testicles, they're evangelicals. Televangelists. <laughs> Check them out, Te everybody. Televangelists. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, there's been a couple that have been caught. There was one guy that got caught with a male prostitute because he was traveling, and he said, oh, no, no, I hired him to hold to hold my luggage for me. That was a story. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But I did was, not know that. Yes, dude. Yeah, so, there was one that, like, so one politician, or, or I, don't, I don't remember if it was a church figure or whatever, like had like, this whole like pray the gay away thing, and yeah. like, they had like a whole camp uh, where they were like sending people and stuff. And, and then like, he's, sleeping and he's with them? totally sleeping with oh them. Oh my and, like, god! Come on, dude, dude if, gay stuff. Yeah, I mean, I would be a little suspicious. Like, all right, it's only guys. We're all gonna go yeah. in the woods together, yeah. and, and we're, we're gonna, gonna get rid of the gay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> get rid of the gay. Let's Everyone, just get it all out. Everyone, take your clothes off. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. just drain the gay away. <laughs> 
<laughs> get it out of your system. <laughs> it's just, yeah. just got to get it out. Yeah. Remember when you uh, got caught with cigarettes when you were a kid by, by your dad and he made you smoke like five packs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the strategy we're going to do. Yeah. 100%. We're going to go in the like woods. Overexposure. And we're just going to keep this going until we just... the gayest thing you've ever seen, we don't ever. Wanna, we don't want to do it anymore, okay? Yeah. Just going to keep going yeah. until we don't want to do it You'll never want it again. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's totally going to work. You know there's people that fall for that shit. You know, for sure. I know, dude. Yes, wow. save me. I know. It kind of oh, yeah. cracks me up. Hey, uh, Adam, did you hear <clears throat> about these? Uh, I want to ask you because this is something that's up your alley. Hmm. Did you hear? And this is this I is know. legit now. I, know, I don't believe it. I'm already. Not, let's hear. Let's hear. No, no. no listen, right. you can order these how these office office buildings on Amazon. Have you heard of these? Order an office building. Yes. So they on Amazon. They, yes. So maybe Doug can look this up. So, so on, are they like a, a do it yourself, build a little office space? Yeah. You order them on Amazon, Let's and they and they and they're exploding in sales right now because so many people are working from home, and so they're putting it in their backyards or on their land. And apparently they're inexpensive and they look pretty damn good. I so, wanna, you know, what is this? Is it like a little. Like, well, I can imagine. So, I, you know me, I'm always. Looking I mean, at, this is smart. I yeah, look at uh, properties all the time, right, for us. So, mm -hmm. I'm looking at these properties that have, and you're seeing this pop up right now more than I've ever seen, mm. is they're converting like their backyard sheds and stuff into office spaces. Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense. Like, it they're does. putting like a little portable AC in it and then they trick it all out to instead of it being a shed. Yeah, so, you don't have like kids and everybody else like and people coming through the house exactly. distracting you mm -hmm. yeah that, yeah that is kind of crazy yeah. let me see them i want to no, see them, I'm, I'm trying to find them too right now oh here we go um all right i'm gonna look it up i can right imagine now. those shipping containers would be a good option you know? like, like a rich roll yeah D doug Remember, i'm gonna rich, rich that's has, right he rich that. had three of them right yeah. he lived in those things i've so, seen those converted a lot oh there you go look at that so doug i just sent you the link because the link that i'm sending you has got pretty good uh pictures. oh wayfair has them too huh yeah, backyard yeah. studio, ten thousand dollars. That's open. Doesn't that's come it. with children. In that's expensive. Oh, Way fair. Oh, <laughs> Show me. <laughs> that's so bad. Okay, Show okay. me that uh, six thousand dollars, five nine nine one. Really that was check what you're getting. No, no, no. So, so look at look at the one. So well, that's the one bad. I just I just sent you. Okay. How? That's ridiculously expensive, though. Bro, it's one hundred thirteen square feet. It's under twenty grand. Amazon ships it for you. 20K. It's yeah. really nice. Uh, but yeah, look, uh, if you don't know how to build anything, it has AC in it, the whole deal. Right? Oh, it does have that too? Yeah, dude. It's all it's all decked out. It doesn't require you to build a foundation for it, apparently. So look at that. That's actually pretty fucking smart. It dude. is, right? I mean, mm. Most people have a backyard space that you could put that in. Yeah. Totally. And I'm, I'm telling you, Interesting. I mean, right now, there's so much stuff is starting to change because people are working from home. For example. Wow. What a, look at, let's look at the, let's see if there's any publicly traded well, companies. Well, you know, it's interesting. These. So this, yeah. this is popping off. And then also those sprinter vans that they're converting into offices, also like, yeah. a, a, you know, like recording studios and mm. in, in media, like people are like all buying these vans and this whole van revolution. Well, dude, it's changing so many things. So I, uh, Jessica's family lives in, uh, in Los Las Vegas in Nevada, right? Mm -hmm. Rent and property values are exploding over there. Why? Because people from California are moving over there in droves. Sure. Rent is going up like crazy. Yeah. Wow. My 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 mother in law is like my rent's going to go up uh, a lot if I if, you know in the next time I have to renew or whatever. She said it's all these Californians and they're all coming over and paying a year in advance or you know buying a property cash or whatever. Yeah. So it's changing quite a bit. So I can imagine this would be a huge. I mean, this is boom. I mean, this is interesting it to is me interesting. how we could use this. I mean, for twenty grand to have a. I mean, this studio costs a hell of a lot more than that to try and build. Like, who's a, got a backyard? Yeah, right. Justin. Idea. Yeah. yeah. You want to build a studio? Could you, yeah, redwood Looking trees. at some redwoods. Yeah, yeah dude. Want to How cool would that be? Yeah, that's not bad. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't want you guys on my property. Well, <laughs> that's, yeah. We'll see all the weird I stuff. Mean, but, yeah. I mean, but for you said it's it's got a, this is AC built in this too, Doug? Because that's that's why that sounds fishy to me. Twenty grand, and you have an AC, AC alone costs eight to ten grand. It's got some. listen. It's got panoramic view, two glass walls. Uh, what else has it got in there? You can do classrooms. People are are building classrooms with these. Wow. Maybe I made up the AC part. <laughs> yeah, I think you did. Yeah, I can't help it because that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be the part that I would think would be the most would be the most annoying for us and mm -hmm. the most expensive, mm -hmm. right? Because a, a box, yeah, with, with yeah, the, one of the chintzy ones. I mean, it's not a huge space to to cool down. True, and it looks like I mean, in the picture that looks like a vent up there in the top. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't tell though. You could put it on top of the the ceiling. I do over the roof. I do think. Yeah, you're right. Like a like a um, uh, uh, motorhome. Jeez, I can't speak today. (laughs) Yeah, help help me out. How's that stroke going? (laughs) It's It's goddamn coffee. We we gotta wait for it. This coffee has not set in, man. Uh, Gotta wait. Speaking of uh, of coffee, uh, so you guys know how well we get stuff sent to us all the time, samples of supplements or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't because I usually don't see it. I take them. (laughs) Yeah, I take them all. Anyway, company sends us. uh, pre-workout powder and I'm not going to say the name I don't want to call them out just company yeah just a company and it's your typical pre-workout powder that relies heavily on stimulants so it's mm. like every stimulant you can imagine that's in there so I'm like uh, all right I'll give it a shot I think I know what I'm going to feel but yeah. let's 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 do this it just shit it just felt like shit I was shaky I didn't feel good it like really makes me appreciate when someone makes uh, actual pre-workout properly, like uh, like like Legion, for example, yeah. they put theanine in their pre-workout because it balances out the caffeine. But I can't believe some. I think people have fried their their CNS so much with the, the amount of caffeine yeah. that they take that they require something with an insane amount of uh, stimulants just to feel. No, oh, I think yeah. that because I didn't even take the whole thing. It was way too much. It was not good. I Is saw that, that Raptor or Bear Attack. I'm not going to say the name. Yeah. But you're trying to throw ra- somebody on the bus right there. Raptor attack. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a name like that. Yeah. It was just extreme. I just saw something. Like, blow your brains out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. Like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> this is like meth, you know? Yeah. I saw an ad that uh, that uh, Mike had that was running right now. Did you? Is, is it true? Is he uh, the number one sports performance supplement that's out there right now on Amazon? I didn't know that. On Amazon, I think so. Wow. So it's not like when you go to a, a coffee shop and it it's says the best coffee, the best in the coffee in the world. Oh, it could yeah. be. I'm gonna have to ask Mike that. <laughs> I'm like, bro, are you the best coffee in the world? Is that what you're doing right now? Yeah. Is that what's going on with these ads? Or are you really the number one sports performance yeah. supplement yeah. company? Well, I mean, everything he puts in this self nominee. Everything he puts in his products uh, has a lot lot of literature behind it that's the one thing i like you never put stuff in there that's like oh this is the cool thing everybody's talking about it's like okay do we have the studies how many studies are the good studies yeah the right dose right It'll put an efficacious amount in there so that's why i mean obviously why i appreciate uh what he does or respect what he does first question is from toady crudeau do any of you integrate different proteins such as whey casein plant-based for different purposes throughout the day or week is casein before bed just bro science, or are there legitimate benefits to utilizing various proteins differently? Uh, who picked this one? I did. Oh, we haven't we haven't crapped all over this in a while. Yeah, I know. So this so this is a uh, context matters question. If your protein intake is low, then the type of protein you eat um, does matter quite a bit. So if you have low protein intake or below what would be considered ideal for performance and building muscle, which studies show is about 0.6 grams per pound of body weight, all the way up to about a gram per pound of body weight. If it's below that, then you're going to want to have a protein source that is high in branched chain amino acids. Whey protein is really good. Animal sources are superior to plant sources. And studies will show that those sources build more muscle, contribute better to performance and recovery and all that stuff. If your protein is high, if you're eating a high protein diet, 0.6 to one gram per pound of body weight, really doesn't make that big of a difference. In fact, it almost doesn't matter at all because when you're eating that much protein, you're getting a lot of amino acids and it doesn't really make uh, a difference. Now, you might be wondering why supplement companies will tell you to eat this protein at night, this one during the day or whatever. Because if you're a successful protein company and you're selling a lot of whey protein, you want to sell another type yeah, of protein. Yeah, you got to figure it out. Yeah, how can you sell another protein without getting them to stop taking the one that they already take? Hmm. Well, you tell them that the one that they buy and Slow take is great digestive. for- Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That one's good for post-workout. This one's good for nighttime. Mm-hmm. This one's good for you know travel. This one's good for whatever. <laughs> so you hear a lot of that, but this is really splitting hairs. And if your protein intake is high- really doesn't make a difference. Now that addresses the whey and the casein, but what I will, uh, say, and I don't do this like on, uh, like I'm not scheduled about it, right? But I'm just aware of it, right? So I, I do rotate and we, I think we all do this, uh, rotate our foods mm-hmm. and where the sources of protein. So like, I'm not always going to get it from uh, chicken thighs. 
Uh, if I found that I had a week where I had a lot of chicken thighs and I didn't have any fish, the next week I'm trying to make sure that I implement more fish into my diet. Right. If I'm uh, never getting it from beans, yeah. I'm trying to get it from beans every once in a while. Like I try to just rotate my foods all the time. So I'm also picking up all the other micronutrients that you're getting from different mm -hmm. types of foods. So I do think there's a tremendous amount of value. I think any articles that try and sell you on why this type of a protein, whether it be from food or a, a protein shake, is better than the other is splitting hairs so long as you're hitting your intake, right? So if you are hitting the number of grams that you should be hitting for your body to build muscle, the maximum amount, which is somewhere between 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of body weight, if you're hitting that where it's coming from is not really going to make a difference on how you change the look of your body your body composition. Yeah. But I think for health purposes, I think it's ideal to to chase that protein number through whole foods and to rotate those whole foods as much as possible. Yeah, that makes that's the exact that's the best advice um, that I would say. And look, they've done studies. They've done studies where they compare plant proteins to animal proteins. And when protein intakes are lower than what we just said, the optimal amount, animal proteins uh, are superior. They mm -hmm. just are. They kick the crap out of plant protein. But then when they take a lot of protein, it doesn't matter. It's equal in terms of the results. Now, here's the deal. Uh, there's a huge individual variance between people in terms of which protein sources feel the best. Right. And for me, uh, <laughs> I stick with the protein sources. I digest the best. So whey mm -hmm. is a mm -hmm. great source of protein. I don't digest whey at all, yeah. so I never have it, right? But there's also beef protein, right? Yes. So there's something else, too, that like I, I always forget about that, and then egg protein. And so mm -hmm. there's other various sources. But yeah, that's one of the big considerations is really how that's affecting your digestive system. What uh, you know you can process uh, the, the best, what, what resonates the best with you. Uh, that's something that I would lean towards. And sometimes that changes, too. Like even if I'm inundated with dairy, I may even feel it a bit to where I'll probably like try some plant protein. Uh, and, and rotate it uh, kind of like what Adam's saying too, but it's just important to kind of move things around so you don't get too inundated with yeah. one source. Yeah, beef for me is the easiest to digest. If I eat a lot of beef, I just my gut feels good, uh, my body feels good as a result. That's my favorite source of protein. Second would be chicken, third would be fish, uh, lamb is up there too. Other sources of protein can bother me. Plant protein's okay, but if I push that too hard, that can start to bother me. Dairy, I can't eat either. Um, so think about that for yourself. Like what makes you feel the best and then hit your protein targets based off of that. Next question is from official JPJ9. What is the best way to fix muscle imbalances? All right, so first let's define a muscle imbalance because there's a couple different ways we can look at this. One is from the aesthetic standpoint uh, where you look at a physique or you look at yourself and you say, okay, I like the way that this part of my body's developed, but it doesn't seem to match this other part of my body. So I want to bring that you know, weak body part up. And then there's the, like, the way personal trainers look at muscle imbalances, which is maybe your right side is not as strong and stable as your left side or – your your straight your your pulling strength is not at the right ratio to your pushing strength, or your quads are overpowering your hamstrings when we do certain exercises. Uh, so those are the ways that they tend to be uh, defined. Now, one of the easiest ways, in my opinion, um, aside from you know really uh, doing an assessment and individual, I mean, if you really want to fix a muscle imbalance, you get a program like Maps Prime. Mm -hmm. You take the compass test, and then you do it for your individual body. But if a kind of general, not nearly as effective, but still will give you some benefit, unilateral work tends to do a pretty damn yeah. good job where you work one arm at a time, one leg at a time, use dumbbells, start with the weak side, and then uh, copy that with the strong side and wait for things to I catch up. I think that's up. the best broad stroke answer for that. I think uh, finding your way back to optimal posture <laughs> Uh, in general, will will cover a lot of that, and uh, and you'll find like uh, areas of your body where you're out of balance, and, and where uh, you're not, you know, starting at the right point. And, and to be able to find your way towards that is everything. It's crucial to to do that, and then also assess: uh, Do I actually have range of motion? Do I have function uh, in my joints like I properly should? And that's usually where I like I like to start there with all like a joint check. Uh, versus just like, you know, from a strength perspective where, oh, well, I... I, I feel like, you know, this this muscle is very much overactive. This one's weak. And, uh, you know, we could go from a, a muscle perspective after that. But I like to just get people to come back to, to proper posture and balance and function and then really work in the strength uh, after that. 
Next question is from Jameson Doug. Can you talk about salt? Is it good or bad? Oh, Sal loves some salt. Yeah, you know what? I, first, guy, salty. first guy, yeah, first guy I ever met that used to carry salt in his purse. You know, uh, everywhere. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> first guy you had a purse. His purse. <laughs> you know, okay. So you this this is when I would talk to clients about um, salt. I mean, you would be shocked at how much of your sodium comes from processed foods. Yeah. If you reduce your processed food consumption or uh, largely eliminate it. You can salt the hell out of your food. Look this up, Doug, for me. Sorry, Sally. No interrupt problem. You, but I, I want to highlight what you're talking about because there used to be this great article that I used to share. It was look at like um, one fast food, how much salt is in one fast food uh, meal comparison, something like that, Doug. Because I, I used to share this with clients to get to give this perspective that you're talking about right now. Like, you eat out one time in a week, and it's like more than your salt intake that you it's like technically three days worth, or something. right? And then you flip that. Take somebody who eats only whole foods. You could salt the shit out of every single meal and never catch up to like. You the, wouldn't even come close. You yeah, couldn't yeah. put. You you would be gross if I salted my my whole natural foods the same way that processed. It wouldn't taste good. Mm -hmm. um, so it's processed food is where you start to get an issue um, with too much sodium. And really, this is only for people who have high blood pressure. Here's the interesting thing. We've demonized salt way too much. Studies actually show that people who eat too little salt have worse health outcomes than people who eat a little too much salt. Mm -hmm. If you're an athlete, this is a big it's deal. It's a performance enhancement big for time. athletes. Big time. In fact, I used to tell my endurance athletes to take a small pinch of sea salt and put it in the water while they were running or doing their endurance sport, and they would notice performance benefits. If you're a low-carb dieter, salt is very important. In fact, sometimes when people feel foggy from going low carb or from fasting. It's not necessarily a lack of carbs or calories. It's the fact that their sodium is low. Throw some so some salt on your food and then you know see how you feel. But that's really the big thing. If you eat whole natural foods, you pretty much don't have to worry about it. That's how I that's mm -hmm. how I tell clients to keep it simple, right? Instead of trying to measure and figure out exactly how many milligrams of sodium that you should have. It's like if you're eating whole foods, enjoy your seasoning. That's what I said. You know, you mm -hmm. season it how you want, salt it how you want, enjoy it if it's whole foods. And if it's processed foods, pay attention to how much you're you're consuming. That the article Doug pulled up, it's not the one I was looking for, but it says you know one meal of like a processed food like that is got more salt than six times a, a regular meal. Yep. So you figure you eat one, you eat you know six meals that are whole foods, and it's going to have less than one one meal that's processed. So you got to that's where you just have to watch out for is how much are you eating out. Right now, I, I would like your to, to hear what you say because you probably managed your sodium more. Definitely. I don't say probably. You definitely managed your sodium more um, than I ever did because you competed. What was that like? Well, so I did it different than well, a lot of competitors. In fact, there's, uh, and I like, again, shout out to Nate Lane. This is another thing that, uh, how I found Lane. I was like researching this for myself, like when I was first getting into competing and trying to figure out like, I remember hearing about the, this common practice that competitors would really start to reduce uh, their calories, their carb intake, and their sodium intake and water heading in. I was like, God, that just sounds like a recipe for like death. Mm -hmm. You know, like that doesn't yeah. sound smart at all, what you could potentially be doing. And the deeper I read into it, the the more that I found that it was a lot of bro science, this idea of pulling all this sodium out of your body before you go into, in fact, it's probably counterproductive. And so I didn't do that. What I did was load during my prep and then went down to a normal amount when I got into peak week. Mm. So I got my body used to pushing X amount of, and I don't remember what the milligrams were off the top of my head. I first measured, found where my normal was. And then all I did was add like two dill pickles a day. So like I used dill pickles to uh, to shoot the sodium up. Oh, that's smart because mm -hmm. you're not really getting any calories. Or anything. Right. And exactly. So, and then I liked them like, cause I was dieting. So it was like something I could mm -hmm. snack on. So I would add, I would add pickles into the diet, do my, and I would season my food all normal. And then as I got into my, my final weeks, I would remove the dill pickles and stuff and pull down. And that was enough to reduce the sodium limit, but I was still getting enough sodium uh, that I think was healthy. Um, but yeah, there's this, there's this myth around, competitors needing to pull because salt pairs with water. So the theory is this, is that if you have all this so salt and sodium in your body and you're drinking all this water, that the water pairs with the the salt and it, it lies between your skin and muscle and gives you this kind of like watery or flat or bloated look. But if you've taught your body to flush that out, it'll it flushes it out within hours and mm -hmm. for certainly in a day. So there's you shouldn't be stressing about that. And so what I would do is teach my body to have 
more sodium, more water. Because it regulates mm-hmm. it. Exactly. So then it would adapt to that new level. And then when I pulled it, then I knew I would really pull it all out. And then I also was not in fear of like being like super low in water and super low in sodium. Mm-hmm. So we all don't need to uh, convert to flavor God. <laughs> yeah. That, oh my yeah, God. Yeah. No, that's, you know, so. Yeah, like businesses popped up because of that. Yeah, uh, no, it's a myth. great, that's a great point. And that companies like that, and I think that's ridiculous. I mean, competitors that I was uh, coaching, they would ask about stuff like flavor God that became really popular when I was competing that brand. And it's a you know it's a one of those seasoning z- zero sodium yep. seasoning uh, flavored things and everybody loved it. You know what I will say this of all of the things that you need to be careful for from processed foods, the sodium is actually probably down the list. To be mm. quite honest, that's how not big of a deal sodium is for most people. The only people that should be careful with sodium are people who have uh, high blood pressure issues, and the doctor literally has ordered you to. Reduce, reduce your sodium yeah. intake, in which case you probably have a poor diet uh, to begin with. Well, and, 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 and getting leaner would probably solve some And of that. to the point of that, many times that's because somebody's got a heavily processed food diet. If mm-hmm. that same person did not not salt their food and just switch from eating McDonald's every other day right. to eating you know a, a salty steak, they would be fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's that the, the doctors, what the doctor sees is that they're through the roof right there. Tell this person to cut their salt out. And so those people think, oh, I gotta, I'm going to stop using table salt on my food. And it's like, that's not where you're getting- still eating the burgers. Yeah, you're getting yeah. like to the article that Doug pulled up. You're, get, you're eating one meal out that's equivalent to six meals uh, of, of whole food meals as far as I sodium. mean, they add soda to everything, like uh, instant oatmeal. You don't, you know, you, you, oatmeal isn't salty, right? Look at instant oatmeal. Added so added sodium to anything that's so, processed. So yeah, and that's something a good point too, right? So like uh, even Chipotle places that are considered like healthy fast food, you got to be careful of that. Any any restaurant that you go to is loads are full of uh, food of sodium, so it, it preserves the food longer. Mm-hmm. So they they do that, right? So you can so they can keep it out, you know, for longer and for more days, so they can serve it and make money off of it. So. Just because you're going to a, a healthy restaurant or a healthy fast food place doesn't mean that it's not loaded full of sodium. No, make the food yourself. You're fine. Yep. Next question is from Katie C. Have you guys ever fallen out of love with fitness? What made you love it again? Hmm. You know, this is a good question. I, 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 I've never not liked uh, fitness. Um, I've definitely li- There's been definitely times in my life where I've enjoyed it more. I enjoy fitness the most when I'm feeling my best, when I'm training at a high performance level and I'm feeling strong and I'm feeling aggressive in my workouts. Um, but I didn't dislike my workouts when that didn't happen. I think that's because, for me at least, and this is something I used to try to communicate to clients, Exercise and workouts and fitness really is a tool um, to, uh, to, to complement my life. So through stressful times in my life or times when I wasn't feeling so good or whatever, I'm, it's definitely not as fun to go work out, but I still enjoy the workout because I'm going there to make myself feel better. Um, but I've never really fallen out of love. I think that's the one most consistent thing I've done uh, since I was 14. I really, for, for me at least. Um, I have a few times. Yeah. Have you, Justin? Uh, yeah, I've gotten like, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, but it, it was really like, I, I got turned off. Yeah, I got fat. <laughs> See, so I'm That's to, the word. I'm trying to think of the politically correct word. <laughs> I got fat. <laughs> yeah, that just happened. It was weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, like I, I, I got tired of, of kind of uh, beating myself up. And, and this is because I was training wrong. Uh, for for a period of time because I was always trying to compete to be the strongest in whatever team setting that I was in and I was in groups with people like again this is where the whole thing with groups is is sort of like near to me because it's it, it's about the individual it's about the individual experience at the end of the day uh, groups a lot of times is great because you kind of feed off momentum but for me it was I got I, I got to a point where I just felt like I was just I was just beating the hell out of myself, and I was like, I just needed to like take a break uh, for a while. And so it wasn't that I was falling out of love; it was just like, okay, I'm more into music now, and I was just like drawn to another passion. But then realized right away, I was like, oh, I don't feel good physically. You know, I like I feel like my energy levels dipping. Like all these things started to happen again, and I hated that even more. So I was like, right back to fitness. Yeah, I feel like it's uh, similar to you know the the house cleaner who doesn't ever want to clean their own house or the construction worker who never builds his own home. Like it's similar to that. I had moments, but it was, it was for different reasons. Right. So my first experience of falling out of love with it was uh, training. 
I trained so many clients uh, the first couple of years of being a personal trainer mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I got burnt of training people. Like I, so I didn't lose my love for fitness as far as like me having a passion for the industry or liking to work out or like I also and I fell off and didn't work out again. It was uh, it was something I was so excited about when I first got into it, and I got burnt. I got burnt of like training so many clients and and trying to solve problems and failing a lot. I mean, let's be honest, the uh, trainer client relationship is a majority of time a failure. I mean, you're lying to me if you tell me that more than 50% of your people got all the results they ever wanted. That's yeah. not mm -hmm. a reality. We're more like baseball, you know, we're batting like 300 if we're lucky that we're getting our clients results. So the consistent failure of not getting people to uh, their goals and and trying to help them all the time and like all i did was speak fitness all day and then when i was off i was in the gym lifting so i, I did have a, a moment of, of being burnt out that was also the same moment that led me to realize that oh i i like teaching trainers more than i like teaching clients so that was that mm. first pivot uh then i had another one where um i was really upset that this was like i've talked about this on the podcast before where i was really upset with where I was at in my career. I wasn't uh, moving up as fast as I, I wanted to move up. Um, I left, I took off, I took a couple of years off of fitness. Uh, per, this is where I pursued medical marijuana. You know, but that was also what made me realize how much I did love it. You know, I left it, I was I realized that, oh, maybe this, this space is not gonna provide the mm -hmm. lifestyle that I've always wanted and the money I wanted to make. So I left it pursued that, accomplished that, and then realized, oh, wow, it wasn't about that for me. I really do miss it and came back. And then I had a little taste of that again, uh, not that long ago uh, after competing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and and the funny part about competing, I'd love to compete. I loved being jacked and strong and looking amazing. Um, I actually didn't like uh, how I felt about our audience, how they they thought of me. That mm, bothered me. Uh, it started yeah. to bother me that I was kind of pigeonholed into the, because we started the podcast when I was in the middle of it, mm -hmm. um, that I was this bodybuilder guy. And I totally never identified with that guy. Like I was never that guy to me. Um, I became that guy to help build what we did. And so when our, our audience like thought of me as that all the time, like I was like, Arr. you know, so there was a part of me that kind of uh, after, after being done and like accomplishing what we did, I was like over it for a while. Like, oh, I don't want to. And that's why I was like all into mobility yeah. and like hang up the man key. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dude. So I'm sick of being handsome. And yeah. Sexy. Yes. Oh yeah. Damn it. Oh Terrible. my God. So hard. Too much. So it, women it, whistling at me as I walked down the street. I remember that. I remember that. Dude, it was <laughs> crazy. We were walking. What were we doing? Oh, lunch? dude. Yeah. We were down in Some Campbell. Some whistled at Adam. Like, I'm like, Ow! what the like, hell's <laughs> going on here? This doesn't happen to me. <laughs> this is <laughs> weird. This is too much. Yeah. I could see how that could get totally. Oh, shut your face. So, but I like I like this question because um, uh, I, even though Sal's answer I thought was a little bad, uh, I, we're it's not. It's true. It's not bad. No, <laughs> it's no. the truth. No, no, it is a truth. He, and you yeah. are he, the most. He's consistent. the most uh, yeah. in love. Like yeah, you're saying. yeah I, he's, I, he's I got like googly eyes. Well, what's constantly. the what's the when's the longest? I guess you didn't work out. Right, right. So I've gone you know a month before without lifting or two months even in a row. Oh, okay, no. that's not bad. Sure. A, a couple months. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I've, de I've definitely. I, but that's why I like this question because um, you know we we are all everybody's life. Lives, I come and go is in, in seasons, and there's definitely seasons of my life where I am all about fitness. All I do is talk about. I mean, obviously, I competed, right? So that's like a, a full time every single day. All I think about is fitness, and I did that for three, four years, and had a blast doing it because I love, I love mm -hmm. fitness. But then I have times where, um, you know, lifting weights and training is uh, is only an, one, one part of the whole health sphere. Yeah, and real easily the other things can get out of whack, and I've realized that now in two decades of of being a personal trainer, that just because my body looks cool on Instagram doesn't necessarily mean that I'm really addressing all other aspects totally. of health in my life. And so as I've gotten older, I've learned to look at that more holistically and go, you know, okay, sure, I'm not in the best shape of my life, but what other other aspects am I really drilling home? And and that's that's. Uh, made me re-fall in love with, with what yeah. we do. I, I stopped. Well, I didn't stop working out, but I did. I was only lifting maybe once or twice a week, but that's because I was doing uh, jujitsu at the time. So when I did jujitsu yeah, for about example, six years. Because you're doing something else fitness ex Exactly. Related. So I, that's, I never really stopped, and you're, it, it, I do. I just love it. But I've changed it so many times. I mean, I went through a very, very tough period of my life uh, years ago when someone close to me uh, had a rough battle with cancer. 
And at those times, I would go into the gym, and it was my workouts were about uh, alleviating stress. It was about making myself feel better, taking care of myself. It wasn't about building muscle or strength or or having the blast. It was like taking a break is what it was. Let me get in here, take a break so I can go back and, and help out. Um, and so, but I've always used it as a tool, and I it, I do. I just uh, I just enjoy it for that. But honestly. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's just the, the discipline of doing it. There's definitely times when I'm doing the workout and well, I'm not thinking good, to myself, I love it. You have good balance though. And I think that's the the answer to this question is what can happen when you when you get so focused on a goal um, or, or a, a modality, a way, like maybe you're in CrossFit and the competitive side or whatever it is that floats your boat. Oh, I've right? definitely been obsessed. I know what that feels yeah, like. Yeah. And, and that leads to burnout. Totally. And, and I think that's, and, and so, and I've done that to myself, right? Mm-hmm. I've, I've become super focused on a goal or, you know, a pursuit of something, went hard at it and then you accomplish it and then you're like, uh, uh I'm over it. Mm-hmm. Right. And that was kind of like bodybuilding, right? For me, it was just like, it was such a, a it was probably one of the biggest accomplishments as far as my fitness my fitness pursuits that I've ever done because of how long it took and then when I got there and kind of achieved what I was going for it was like eh, anything like whatever. anything you do uh, for a long period of time you're gonna go through periods of really enjoying it and through periods of not enjoying it but what gets you through that is the discipline uh, look I'm a I'm a dad I love my kids more than anything I don't always like them there's definitely times I don't like my kids there's other times when I like them even more. Um, and I'm going to be their dad for the rest of their lives. Um, it's a long relationship. Same thing with fitness. There's going to be times when you love working out and it's great. Don't uh, fall in love with that feeling because it's going to be very hard to stay consistent when you, at those normal times when working out isn't as great, when it kind of sucks, when you're not as strong, when you're not feeling great, when it's not as fun. Um, if you want to stay consistent, it's that discipline that's the important thing to focus I think on. The, I think the key is, too, is to not look at look, – it's we, when we. I love that they use the word fitness, too, because that encompasses so much. Every, it's yeah, not it's just everything. going and lifting weights. Like – Sometimes that is spending time with my my you know my partner and my child, or sometimes that is you know strengthening the relationships with my friends. Sometimes that is health. You're talking about health. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes that is you know reading more, or you know practicing meditation, or doing more sauna work mm-hmm. and more uh, inward type of work. Like I, I think that's the the key is to make sure you're 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 always in pursuit of bettering yourself in in the the total sphere sphere of health. It doesn't always have to be this. I'm going to the gym and hammering the weights three days a week and I'm and following the MAPS anabolic yeah. program. Like sometimes it just looks different and being okay with that so long as you are always moving in the right direction. Personal development. Right. If you're always trying to improve yourself as a person, then fitness will probably find its way into your life most of the time. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find us all over social media, Instagram, and also now on Parlor. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug, the super elf at Mind Pump Doug. Personality. Um, I didn't go into it thinking that. What ended up happening was I hit it out the park with a few of those clients, and then those ones start referring other mm-hmm. friends like them. Before you knew it, all of a sudden I had my my schedule filled with a majority of that client. That's a great point. It's well, like you're, it's like you don't find your niche; your niche ends up finding you. That's the th- 